Ahsoka E.K. Johnston. Ashley Eckstein shows off her Ahsoka Lego dress. And much, much more. Now, from the Lucasfilm headquarters, it's the Star Wars Show. Hello, I'm Jedi Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I'm Andy Gutierrez. Welcome to a haunted episode of the Star Wars Show. Do you mean haunted because the set has a couple of Star Wars jack-o'-lanterns on it, or...? That, and legend has it, the ghost of the copy machine that used to live here has returned. <laughs> yes, go to the news. Ugh, you got papers and ectoplasm Ugh. everywhere. Ugh, I mean, he's a ghost. We took his home. I mean, what else is he supposed to do? It's a good point, actually. In case you missed it, late last week, Lucasfilm officially announced that Donald Glover would be playing Lando Calrissian in the untitled Han Solo standalone film. Glover joins Alden Ehrenreich, who is playing Han Solo in the 2018 release, directed by 21 Jump Street and Lego Movie alums Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. In a joint statement, Lord and Miller said, we're so lucky to have an artist as talented as Donald join us. These are big shoes to fill in an even bigger cape, and this one fits in perfectly, which will save us money on alterations. Also, we'd like to publicly apologize to Donald for ruining his Comic-Con forever. I think this yeah. is an I am catching choice. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, too. Thanks, haunted copy machine. Yeah. Uh. In book news, we here at the Star Wars show would like to send out a huge congratulations to E.K. Johnston, whose Star Wars novel Ahsoka hit number one on the New York Times bestseller list this past week in the young adult category. Finally, a series of Rogue One standees will soon start appearing in 100 selected IMAX theaters across the country. The standees feature the cast bathed in schematics featuring messages hidden in Arabesh text. And if you take a picture of yourself in front of the standee, you can win a trip to LA for a Rogue One screening at IMAX headquarters. Just be sure to upload your picture to Twitter using the hashtag Rogue IMAX Sweeps for a chance to win. For more details and rules, check out this link. And for more breaking Star Wars news from across the galaxy... Oh, this again. Check out Star Wars <laughs> My name is Nathan Sawaya. We're here in my art studio in Los Angeles, where I have over 5 million Lego bricks, all sorted by shape and color, because I'm an artist that works with Lego to create all of my sculptures. There's something special about Star Wars and Lego. I mean, they are both universally loved, and I think that's why they work so well together. I don't think there's anything in the Star Wars universe that cannot be built out of Lego. I think that's the great thing, is that you can create anything you can imagine. I was speaking with Ashley Eckstein about her upcoming fashion show, and we just sparked this idea of what, what if we could build a dress out of Lego for you to wear? We revealed the dress at Comic-Con at the Her Universe Fashion Show, and when she walked on stage, the crowd went crazy. Hey guys, Ashley Eckstein here with designer Andrew McLean. Hey there. And we're here at Lucasville, and we have the honor to present our one-of-a-kind, never-been-done-before Ahsoka Tano Lego Couture gown. Andrew, how many Lego bricks are on this gown? say there are about 10,000 Lego bricks, probably more. We kind of lost count. <laughs> and how heavy is it? Well, you were wiring it all night, so you know it was pretty heavy, around 25 pounds. <laughs> well, this is the first time Lego has ever been able to walk down a runway. Ahsoka Tano Star Wars Lego Couture here at Lucasfilm. I'm here with E.K. Johnston, the author of the best-selling book, Ahsoka. Kate, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you. What kind of influence was Star Wars on you before you wrote Ahsoka? Um, tremendously. I Probably one of my biggest pop culture references is Star Wars. Mm -hmm. um, I often joke that Star Wars Ahsoka is my only book without Star Wars references in it. <laughs> and the number of times I typed, like, that's not how the Force works, and then had to erase it. Yeah. So I guess in terms of storytelling and heroes and all that kind of stuff, it's very much a huge influence on me. As a storyteller, what do you think it is that makes the Star Wars universe so compelling? I think part of it is that it's fun. Things are always exploding. There's always really great character moments, which is fantastic. And it's so big now. My brother is 10 years older than me, and my nephews are like toddlers. And all across those generations, we just all love it. I think it's just accessible, which is fun, too. One of the fun things about Star Wars is the way that different authors will add their own little parts to it. Are there any things that you really enjoyed adding to the Star Wars universe? My favorite is there's a board game in the book called Crokin, which is based on a very, very local Canadian board game called Crokinole, because I had to get a 
Canadian reference in somehow. Yeah. So I gave them like an electronic scoreboard. But aside from that, it's basically Crokono. So it's been really funny to get like emails from Canadians and being like, did you just put Crokono in Star Wars? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, they let me do that. Do you have any other Canadian Easter eggs? In there? Um, there are two, but they haven't been found yet. So I don't know. Oh, OK. So we just need to put people on alert. Yes, there, there's three. And out. people have found the Crokono, but there's two others. And you've been doing the book tour with Ashley now. Yes which has been fabulous. She's wonderful. So how's the turnout been at Zoss? There have been hundreds of people and like children in adorable costumes and adults in amazing costumes. We've sold out Barnes and Nobles and they've closed and we are still signing like an hour and a half later. Wow. So it's been, yeah, the turnout has been amazing. When did you find out that Ahsoka was a bestseller? Well, I got a couple of text messages first and I ignored them because I wanted my agent to call me and tell me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he called and said, congratulations. And I said, you're going to have to tell me because I haven't checked any of my messages yet. And then he told me and then I went, and bought some ice cream. So many firsts have come along with this book yes, for you. Yes, yes, it's been fabulous. Like this is my first like really big book tour, and mm -hmm. the New York Times list is kind of that like untangible thing at the end of every writer's dream, really, where yeah. you're like, it would be nice, but it's also really difficult. And getting the hardcover and the ebook list at the same time was mm. incredible. Everyone has just sort of worked so hard to get the book that far, and it was it was amazing. Kate, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. And we have more Star Wars show coming up right now. Last week, we asked you to share some of your favorite Star Wars concept art with us, and you sent a ton of inspiring examples like Palpatine's unused lava lair for Return of the Jedi. And Ralph McQuarrie's original Vader and Luke duel, which had P.K. Sullivan stating, I've always loved this piece. It's so kinetic and Vader is incredibly menacing. It's Art Deco meets Westerns. And finally, Lee Gordon de Marbury spoke for all of us here when he said the funnest stuff to notice is how old Ralph designs are showing up in Rebels. Oh! Oh, hey, look who it is. Wow. Uh, and he wore a costume. It's cute. And we want to see your Star Wars Halloween stuff. Send us your carved pumpkins, your costumes, anything you did this year that was spooky in Star Wars. We want to see it. Send it using the hashtag SpookyStarWars and we will feature our favorites here next week. I have something to say! Oh, we're still doing this bit. Okay, what is it? Be sure to check out the Star Wars After Show presented by Verizon, where Andy, along with the panel of Lucasfilm employees, break down all the happenings in this week's episode of the Star Wars Show. Watch it this Thursday and every Thursday on YouTube.com slash <laughs> to the nether region I go. Now oh, they really phoned in the special effects this week. Well, everyone who usually does our effects is working on a movie or something. That's fair. Rogue One, a Star Wars story, only theaters December 16th. <laughs>